Hey, how you guys doing? Um, we're going to talk about, of course, Apple's uh, uh, keynote and some of the tech news on their release of three new Macs utilizing their new um, processors that they developed themselves based on their, of course, iPhone and iPad um, processors. They're uh, putting them into Macs. And uh, we're going to look, of course, at the three new releases that are, are the three new computers are going to be utilizing these processors um, which is going to be uh, the MacBook Air and the uh, Mac Mini which I speculated they're going to do a little bit of a surprise they're going to also put it in the uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch now before we go into detail of those computers and and things like that I wanted to go quickly through the pros and cons and then we're going to go into detail now some of the uh, big pros on this is longer battery life um, and of course we see that with the uh, iPhone and um, iPad and uh, another big pro for Apple and the consumer is they don't have to wait for Intel for their pro for them to release a new processor Obviously, the Apple doesn't put old, usually old chips into their Macs. Uh, they wait to the new Intel release cycle, and then they usually um, release the new Macs. Since they're developing their own processor, they don't have to do that anymore, which means um, quicker turnaround for the consumer, which is a good thing. Now, there is a lot of cons um, with this using their own processors. And there's some very boisterous claims from Apple, which I am very skeptical. Uh, skeptical. Um, actually, before I go through the cons, um, let me say that I like the idea of utilizing these uh, SOC M1 chips in some of Mac, uh, these Macs because it's going to really save on battery life. And generally, the average consumer doesn't need something that powerful. I mean, yeah, sure, gaming and things like that, but... Uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the content creators and other things, uh, high-end use, not so much, but I'm going to go into the specifics in that. But I think it's a great idea for the average consumer who doesn't really need that much. Now, I'm going to go over some of the cons with this. And the biggest con is uh, these uh, new Silicon Macs utilizing these M1 chips cannot run Thunderbolt eGPUs which is bad for content creators such as myself. And um, Apple released no information on this. Um, the reason why, is it a hardware software limitations or if it can be fixed in the future? So there's a lot of uncertainty. So we're gonna have to wait till these computers get released and tested um, by third-party testers we're going to see release once it actually gets released to the public and then like i said we got to worry about that egpu uh, if it's going to be utilized by high-end users um ram uh the ram is built in and cannot be upgraded because all the ram is inside this m1 chip um, then we have to worry about third-party support um rosetta Rosetta 2, which is an emulator, which they previously did when they switched from those type of chips to Intel. And, um, and then into universal apps um, where they can run both and then eventually to um, maybe native uh, M1 chip support. Another big if is, is Windows can support running um, Windows 10 on these chips. Um, like boot camp, dual booting, because it's going to affect those people who want to run Windows on their Mac, be able to switch between Mac OS, Big Sur, and uh, Windows 10. Um, let me see. And I'm also wondering what's the incentive of really putting 13-inch, um, uh, these M1 chips in a 13-inch MacBook Pro. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The only really advantage you do with that is um, the larger form factor means a bigger battery and longer battery life um, that's the only really advantage I see with that uh, and I uh, for me I would probably stick with the Mac mini and 
MacBook Air. It makes sense. Of course, they, um, they're still uh, making available more high-end 13-inch uh, MacBook Pros, um, Intel processors like i9s and whatever. So that's always a, an option for you as well, which is good. They need to keep that. They have been making some big boisterous claims on how this chip is much faster, yet they don't really compare it to much of anything. Um, they didn't say to previous Macs. They don't say um, to what type of Windows PC computers. So this is all unknown. In fact, one of the biggest uh, boisterous claims they had made, uh, for instance, with Rosetta 2, that um, these um, all these apps that are using Rosetta 2, um, for instance, they're not carried over to the M1 chips yet, which means they're still Intel binaries, that the Rosetta 2 can run these applications faster using Rosetta 2 than uh, native in, uh, than on native Intel computers or their Macs, which makes no sense. I'm very iffy on that. And that's a really boisterous claim that it can run faster. Because anytime you run um, emulation software, you need resources for both the computer and the software you're emulating. And it, I just don't see that happening. And that's why I don't like running high-end applications on emulation type software. But that's just me. So let's go in uh, particular of the um, SOC M M1 chips that Macs are utilizing. And um, now what it's going to do is it's going to utilize a lot of things built in instead of being just on the motherboard. Um, it's going to utilize a 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU, also integrated with the I.O. chip, uh, DDR4 RAM, Thunderbolt and the Apple T2, uh, I believe it's like a security chip. Yes, there can be some big advantages to, to this. And since um, everything is located on that one chip, uh, it means more fast, uh, faster communication between all those items inside the chip, utilizing a faster uh, bandwidth, So, which I think will increase the speed. And I think it'll be easier for updates and things like that because you don't have to put all those separate chips all over the motherboard. You're going to decrease that. You're going to have more inside the chip. Of course, um, like I said, with the built-in RAM, uh, once you buy that um, M1 uh, Mac um, or Silicon Mac, or I guess what, what they call it, is you can't. You're stuck with the amount of RAM unless you um, sell it and buy another one, or just buy another one with the increased RAM capacity and so um, I'm a little wary I'm uh, very cautiously optimistic on the max and I hopefully they're not gonna go to totally all M1 type max and tell and cross their entire board uh, I don't think they're gonna do that at least with the, the uh, Mac Pro I don't think they're going to utilize it um, because I think that would be a big mistake and we just too much unknowns right now. So I'm, I'm guessing like big content creators and things are not going to utilize, utilize these kind of Macs as long as they give the user an option. They're doing that with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. You can use the M1 chip or a regular Intel, which is great. Hopefully they're going to keep it that way. Um, like I said, I think it's a great idea for the average user. Um, uh, power users and uh, um, people that use it for business for high-end applications, not so much, but we'll see. Um, I'm waiting once these uh, uh, three new Macs gets released, we're going to see how much claim is true. Um, we'll see. I'm, like I said, very op uh, uh, doubtful, but we'll see. Well, thanks for watching and see you guys later.